Anderson Cooper 360, weeknights at 8 and 10 on CNN. What Jonathan Good saw the night Trayvon Martin died goes to the heart of the Zimmerman case. That night that you saw, the person who you now know to be Trayvon Martin was on top, correct? Correct. And he was the one who was raining blows down on the person on the bottom, George Zimmerman, right? That's what it looked like. Good lives in the subdivision where the shooting took place. He was watching from his patio about 15 to 20 feet away. Zimmerman that night was wearing a red and black jacket. Martin, a dark hooded sweatshirt. The color of clothing on, the, on top, what could you see? It was dark. Okay, how about the cl uh, color of clothing at the bottom? I believe it was a light white or red okay. color. But that's not all Good says he saw. He witnessed physical blows being thrown, MMA style, mixed martial arts. What you saw was the person on top in an MMA style straddle position, correct? Correct. That was further described, was it not as being ground and pound? Correct. Good also testified about one more key question. That voice screaming for help in the darkness he believes belonged to Zimmerman. The voice screaming for help however many times that you heard it, it was just one person's voice? When I heard it outside, yes. I believe it was just one person's voice, yes. And you now believe that that was George Zimmerman's voice, correct? I never said that. Do you I said believe it could have been his, but I was not 100% sure. I, I'm not asking for 100% certainty. I'm asking you to use your common sense and to tell us if you think that that was George Zimmerman's voice screaming for help, the person on the bottom. That's just my opinion. Do you saw me swear from the top? The next person to take the stand was another neighbor, Jonathan Manalo, who was the first person to talk to Zimmerman seconds after the shooting. Were you the first person after the shot that came into contact with anybody out there, the defendant and the victim on the ground? Yes. The prosecution seemed to be focused on Zimmerman's state of mind. Zeroing in on a phone call Manalo made that night, a handcuffed Zimmerman had asked Manalo to call his wife for him. I had a connection with her right away and I, I said, your husband has been involved in a shooting. He's being handcuffed and he's going to be held for questioning at the Stanford Police Department. And around that time, he kind of cut me off and he says, just tell her I shot someone. Did you respond to that? Yes. What did you say? Okay, well, he just shot someone. Manalo also testified that Zimmerman had the look of a man who had just been beaten up and even snapped this cell phone picture of Zimmerman's bloody head. On cross-examination, Manalo seemed to encapsulate Zimmerman's entire defense, quoting what Zimmerman told him moments after the fatal shot and with the body of the teenager lying sprawled nearby. This guy was beating me up and I shot him. And I had to defend myself and I shot him. I'm sorry. I was defending myself and I shot him. So this guy was beating me up, I was defending myself and I shot him is what he told you? Yes. Without hesitation? No. And from what you could tell at the moment, it seemed completely true? Yes. Testimony later from a police officer who was one of the first responders on the scene seemed to align with Zimmerman's claims. Was his jacket pushed up in any way? I don't believe so. Did you see any te tears? in his jacket? No, sir. What, if anything, did you notice about the condition of his jacket? Uh, the back of it was wetter than the front of it, and it was also covered in grass.